Imagine standing at the crossroads of desire and disappointment. On one path you see countless men, their arms laden with gifts, compliments spilling from their lips, desperately trying to win the affection of women who seem increasingly disinterested. On the other path stands a smaller group of men, confident and composed, engaging in meaningful conversations and building genuine connections. Which path would you choose? For too long, we've been fed the idea that being nice is the key to success with women. But what if I told you this well-intentioned approach is not only ineffective but potentially harmful to your relationships and self-esteem? Enter the wisdom of Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that offers a revolutionary perspective on how to interact with women and navigate the complex world of relationships. In this video, we'll uncover the hidden pitfalls of the nice guy syndrome and explore how stoic principles can transform your approach to dating and relationships. We'll dive into the teachings of great thinkers like Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus, applying their timeless wisdom to modern day scenarios. You'll discover how to cultivate authentic virtue, set healthy boundaries, and develop the kind of quiet confidence that naturally attracts others. But this isn't just about improving your love life. The stoic approach we'll explore has the power to revolutionize every aspect of your existence, from your career to your personal growth. Are you ready to challenge everything you thought you knew about attraction and embark on a journey of self-discovery? Buckle up, because we're about to shatter some long-held myths and rebuild your approach from the ground up. And trust me, by the end of this video, you'll never look at your interactions with women or yourself the same way again. So, stick around, hit that like button, and subscribe for more mind-blowing insights. Let's dive in. I apologize for the misunderstanding. You're right, the script should be more extensive. I'll expand on each section to provide a more in-depth and engaging script. Here's a more detailed version. The Nice Guy Dilemma Picture this. It's ancient Rome, and a young man named Marcus is hopelessly in love with a senator's daughter. He spends his days showering her with gifts, agreeing with her every word, and catering to her every whim. His friends watch in dismay as he neglects his own interests and aspirations, pouring all his energy into winning her affection. But despite his efforts, she seems more interested in the confident gladiator who barely gives her a second glance. Sound familiar? Fast forward 2,000 years and not much has changed. The nice guy approach is as old as time itself and just as ineffective. We've all been there, bending over backwards to please someone, only to watch them walk away with someone else. It's a frustrating, demoralizing experience that leaves us wondering what went wrong. But why does being nice fail so spectacularly? It's simple. Niceness, when overdone, becomes a form of manipulation. It's a covert contract where you expect affection in return for your kindness. You're not being kind out of genuine goodwill, but with the expectation of a specific outcome. Women can sense this inauthenticity from a mile away, and it's about as attractive as a gladiator without his sword. Think about it. Have you ever found yourself agreeing with everything a woman says, even when you disagree? Or perhaps you've gone out of your way to do favors, hoping she'll notice and reciprocate your feelings? If so, you're not alone. This behavior is deeply ingrained in our society, perpetuated by romantic comedies and well-meaning but misguided advice. But here's the kicker. Not only is this approach ineffective, it's potentially harmful to both you and the women you interact with. For you, it leads to resentment, frustration, and a loss of self-respect. For women, it creates uncomfortable situations where they feel obligated or manipulated. It's a lose-lose situation. So what's the alternative? That's where our stoic journey begins. But before we dive into the solution, 
Let's take a moment to really understand why this approach is so detrimental. Have you ever felt drained after constantly trying to please someone? Or perhaps you've lost respect for yourself after compromising your own values to win someone's affection? These are the real costs of the nice guy approach. As we move forward, I want you to keep these experiences in mind because the alternative we're about to explore isn't just about being more successful with women, it's about becoming a more authentic, confident and fulfilled version of yourself. The Stoic Alternative Enter Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism, strolling through the painted porch in Athens. If he were to witness our modern dating scene, he'd likely shake his head in dismay. The constant validation seeking, the emotional roller coasters, the manipulation disguised as kindness, all of this goes against the core principles of Stoic philosophy. But what exactly is Stoicism and how can it help us in our interactions with women? Contrary to popular belief, Stoicism isn't about being cold or unfeeling. It's not about suppressing emotions or adopting a don't care attitude. Instead, it's about cultivating virtue and living in harmony with nature and reason. Imagine for a moment a mighty oak tree. It stands tall and strong, its roots deep in the earth. When storms come, it may bend, but it doesn't break. This is the essence of Stoicism, developing inner strength and resilience that allows you to weather any storm, whether it's rejection, heartbreak, or the ups and downs of dating and relationships. So, what would a stoic approach to interacting with women look like? It starts with self-respect and authenticity. Instead of trying to please everyone, focus on being the best version of yourself. As Marcus Aurelius, one of the most renowned stoic philosophers said, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. In this case, the injury is the manipulation inherent in excessive niceness. But how do we put this into practice? It's one thing to talk about self-respect and authenticity, and another to actually embody these qualities in our daily lives. That's why we're going to break this down into actionable steps that would make even Epictetus, another great Stoic teacher, proud. As we explore these steps, I want you to think about how they might apply to your own life. Have you been compromising your values or hiding your true self in an attempt to be liked? How might your interactions change if you approached them from a place of self-respect and authenticity? Remember, this isn't about becoming someone you're not. It's about peeling away the layers of societal conditioning and people-pleasing behaviors to reveal your true self. And as we'll see, this authentic self is far more attractive and magnetic than any facade of niceness. Cultivating Virtue, the Stoic Approach. Step one, self-respect and boundaries. Imagine you're building a fortress. Your self-respect is the foundation and your boundaries are the walls. Without these, you're vulnerable to external influences and manipulation. You become a leaf in the wind, blown about by others' opinions and desires. But with a strong foundation of self-respect and clear boundaries, you become that mighty oak we talked about earlier, rooted, strong and resilient. So, how do we build this fortress? Start by identifying your values and non-negotiables. What do you stand for? What won't you tolerate? These aren't just abstract concepts. They're the guiding principles of your life. Maybe you value honesty above all else, or perhaps personal growth is your highest priority. Whatever your values are, get clear on them. Once you've established these, the next step is to communicate them clearly and consistently. This doesn't mean you need to announce your boundaries to everyone you meet. Rather, it's about living in alignment with these values and boundaries. If someone crosses a line, you address it calmly and firmly. If a situation doesn't align with your values, you're not afraid to walk away. 
Remember, it's not about being rigid or unyielding, but about having a strong sense of self. This quiet confidence is magnetic, far more attractive than any forced niceness. Think about the people you admire most. Chances are, they have a clear sense of who they are and what they stand for. That's what we're aiming for here. As you start to implement this in your life, you might find it challenging at first. You might worry about offending people or missing out on opportunities. But here's the truth. When you respect yourself and your boundaries, others will too. And those who don't? Well, they're showing you exactly who they are and saving you time and energy in the long run. Step 2. Honesty and Authenticity Think of the last time you pretended to agree with someone just to be nice. Maybe you nodded along to an opinion you disagreed with, or feigned interest in a topic that bored you. How did it feel? Probably not great. This kind of inauthentic behavior might seem harmless in the moment, but over time, it erodes your sense of self and leaves you feeling disconnected and unfulfilled. Stoicism teaches us to align our actions with our beliefs. This means being honest, even when it's uncomfortable. It means expressing your true thoughts and feelings, even if they might not be what the other person wants to hear. This isn't about being brutally honest or unnecessarily harsh. It's about being true to yourself and respectful of others. In practice, this could mean respectfully disagreeing with a woman's opinion or expressing your true feelings about a situation. It's not about being confrontational, but about being real. Trust me, a genuine disagreement is far more interesting than mindless agreement. It sparks conversation, creates opportunities for growth, and allows for a true connection based on who you really are, not who you think someone wants you to be. Consider this. Have you ever been drawn to someone who seemed to have no opinions of their own? Who agreed with everything you said? Probably not. We're attracted to people who have their own thoughts, ideas and passions. By being authentic, you become that person, someone interesting, engaging and real. As you practice this authenticity, you might find that some people are put off by it. That's okay. Not everyone will like the real you, and that's not the goal. The goal is to attract people who appreciate you for who you truly are, not for who you're pretending to be. Step 3. Emotional Resilience Picture a sturdy oak tree in a storm. It bends with the wind, but doesn't break. Its roots run deep, anchoring it firmly in place no matter how strong the gale. This is emotional resilience, a key stoic principle. When it comes to interactions with women, this means not letting your happiness depend on their reactions or approval. Think about how liberating that would be. No more emotional roller coasters based on whether she texted back or not. No more devastating blows to your self-esteem because of rejection. Instead, you remain steady, your self-worth intact, regardless of external circumstances. But how do we develop this resilience? One powerful stoic technique is negative visualization. This involves imagining scenarios where things don't go your way. A rejection, a bad date, a breakup, and mentally preparing for them. This might sound pessimistic, but it's actually incredibly empowering. By facing these possibilities in your mind, you rob them of their power to devastate you in reality. Cultivate this by regularly practicing negative visualization. Imagine scenarios where things don't go your way, a rejection, a bad date, and mentally prepare for them. How would you react? How would you maintain your composure and self-respect? By doing this, you'll be equipped to handle any outcome with grace and composure. Another aspect of emotional resilience is focusing on what you can control. You can't control whether someone likes you or wants to be with you, but you can control how you present yourself, how you treat others, and how you respond to different situations. 
by focusing your energy on these aspects, you free yourself from the anxiety and frustration of trying to control the uncontrollable. As you develop this resilience, you'll find that your interactions with women become much more relaxed and enjoyable. You're no longer approaching each interaction with desperation or neediness. Instead, you're coming from a place of self-assurance and genuine interest. And paradoxically, this makes you far more attractive than any amount of try-hard niceness ever could. The Stoic in Action Now, let's see how this plays out in real life. Imagine you're at a coffee shop and you see an attractive woman. The old you might have rushed to buy her a drink, complimented her excessively, and agreed with everything she said in an attempt to win her approval. But let's see how the stoic you handles this situation. You strike up a genuine conversation, expressing interest in getting to know her as a person, not just as a potential romantic interest. You express your true opinions, even if they differ from hers, leading to an engaging and stimulating discussion. You maintain your boundaries, respecting both her space and your own. If she's not interested, you accept it with equanimity, knowing that your self-worth isn't dependent on her approval. If she is interested, great. But either way, you remain true to yourself. This approach might feel strange at first, if you're used to the nice guy method. But think about how much more genuine and respectful this interaction is. You're not trying to manipulate or impress. You're simply being yourself and seeing if there's a real connection. Remember, the goal isn't to win everyone over, but to be true to yourself and your principles. As Epictetus said, he is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. In this case, what you have is your integrity, self-respect and authenticity, and those are far more valuable than any fleeting approval or validation. Common Misconceptions Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Isn't this just being a jerk? Not at all. The Stoic approach isn't about being cold or uncaring. It's about being authentic, virtuous and resilient. You can still be kind and considerate, in fact, these are Stoic virtues. The difference is that you're doing it from a place of genuine goodwill, not expectation or manipulation. Others might worry that this approach will lead to loneliness. But think about it. Would you rather be surrounded by people who like a fake version of you or have meaningful connections with those who appreciate the real you? Quality always trumps quantity when it comes to relationships, some might argue that this approach is too philosophical or impractical for the real world of dating and relationships. But remember, Stoicism isn't just a set of lofty ideas. It's a practical philosophy designed to be applied in everyday life. By incorporating these principles, you're not just changing how you interact with women. You're transforming your entire approach to life. The Stoic Transformation as we wrap up our journey through Stoicism and its application to interactions with women, take a moment to imagine the new you. Confident, authentic, resilient. You're no longer swayed by every rejection or validation. You're living according to your principles, treating women with genuine respect and attracting meaningful connections. This transformation goes beyond dating. It seeps into every aspect of your life, your career, your friendships, your personal growth. You're no longer a leaf blown about by the winds of others' opinions, but a sturdy oak grounded in your values. Imagine walking into a room not worried about what others think of you, but focused on how you can contribute value and engage in meaningful interactions. Picture yourself handling rejection with grace, knowing that it's not a reflection of your worth but simply a mismatch of compatibility. Envision building relationships based on mutual respect and genuine connection rather than manipulation or desperation. This is the power of the stoic approach. It's not just about stopping being nice to women. 
It's about starting to be authentic with everyone, including yourself. It's about building a life of integrity, resilience, and true confidence. So, are you ready to stop being nice and start being stoic? Remember, this is a journey, not a destination. It takes practice, patience, and perseverance. You'll face challenges along the way. Old habits die hard, and there may be times when you're tempted to fall back into people-pleasing behaviors. But with each step you take on this path, you'll find yourself becoming stronger, more authentic, and ultimately, more fulfilled. As you go forth into the world, armed with these stoic principles, remember the words of Marcus Aurelius. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Your interactions with women, and indeed all areas of your life, will transform as you embrace this mindset. Now, I want to hear from you. How will you apply these stoic principles in your life? What's one small step you can take today to start this transformation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your insights might just inspire someone else on their journey. And if you found value in this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. By spreading these ideas, we can create a community of individuals committed to personal growth and authentic living. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Your stoic journey starts now. Until next time, stay true to yourself and keep philosophizing.